Okay, good day everybody and uh, welcome to episode 50 of my YouTube video series and today we're going to talk about Singapore, right? And I haven't done a Singapore video in a long time and today's uh, video I'm going to teach you something a bit basic which is um, how would you normally try to buy a private property in Singapore whether for investment or for own stay, right? Uh, what are the kind of trends that you, you can look like? And I think one thing that you should pay attention to today is actually the cross island line. Well, uh, there are a lot of MRT lines in Singapore today but the cross island line is the next a uh, big upcoming MRT line that, in my opinion, actually a lot of people haven't really paid attention to. Uh, part of this MRT line is already under construction. And uh, when the MRT comes up in uh, about six to seven years from now, uh, you have a boost to that area because, uh, you know, like what happened to Thompson Line for East Coast today, right? Like Thompson Line East Coast is going to open in a pro progressively over the next few months. And that will give a, a lot of lifestyle benefits to people who live around there. But of course, now if you want to buy there, it's too late, all right. So, so uh, uh, you have to look something. I don't know, five, six, seven years forward, and I think cross island line is one way to do that. So let's delve deeper into this video, and we're going to spotlight basically Pasir Ris, uh, which is where I stay in Singapore, and I think uh, I I will use Pasir Ris example of how cross island line will give a benefit to the properties there, and what are the kind of opportunities or properties that you can consider in Pasir Ris due to the cross island line. So as per usual. Let's start this video with an introduction on myself. Director of Alpha Marketing, Royal Steel, Internal Division. So many clients. Number six, right? Six thousand incoming supply in Johor. This is it. Thank you all. I am writing. Thank you for attending today's presentation on this Internal Division. Okay, so my name is Ryan Koo. I'm a property investor. I'm also a property agent uh, with ERA in Singapore. And basically, uh, as a property investor, uh, first, I'm a property investor first. I've done, uh, I own real estate in Singapore, in Malaysia, uh, and also other parts of the world. Previously, I used to own property in US, but I sold it already. Uh, and um, here, uh, you have seen me written articles for HProp, for Property Guru, for ST Property. I've been on the stage with uh, many uh, real estate figures, both in Singapore and Malaysia. And um, yeah, so <laughs> hope you enjoy my YouTube. And today we're going to talk about a topic which is uh, using Cross Island Line to uh, buy properties in Pasir Ridge. We're going to spotlight Pasir Ridge because we can't do the entire Cross Island Line. It takes too long. So today we will just focus on Pasir Ridge. But uh, first of all, I think since I haven't do a Singapore video in a long time, let's talk about the mood, right? Uh, as of March <laughs> this year, 2024, how's the mood in the Singapore property market today and what are some of the key news that I feel is important? Well, the government has done a lot of property-related tweaks in the market recently. I think there are a few which are important to understand. Uh, number one, of course, is that rental uh, is uh, slow down, right? Ever since last year, right? Uh, this came out in the papers in March, uh, early this month and i think that's basically rentals have come down because there's a high supply of completed units i think we sort of foresaw this since end of last year uh, there are a lot of property coming to supply uh, this will happen throughout 2024 as well so rental market will be depressed it won't be depressed too much but it will not be climbing like that's for sure um, and if you look at the price index in fact for rental right you can see it really went down went down uh, significantly in quarter four so if you're looking to be a tenant right uh it's a better time to rent if you're a landlord you have to be adjust your pricing expectation because uh it will be going down uh, it will still go down this year i think but but not by much uh, singapore is still high demand place but you will not expect rents to climb uh, if uh if, if anything you get a good tenant just close it uh don't waste time uh, expect your unit to remain in the rental market for longer right next is of course a lot of you would have realized that um the property tax have gone up Right. And of course, government did adjust a little bit to help the owner occupiers. But basically, above uh, everyone in general is paying uh, a lot more on property tax, right? Especially if your unit is for rental, you will see that easily property tax now may be even equivalent to one month rental, right? <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. Uh, government is trying to reduce property uh, as a investment thing. So if you don't own the property for own state, you pay more property tax, right? So it's another thing which is sort of dampening the mood right now for real estate investment. Um, the next thing is, but actually property prices overall are still holding quite well. Um, even in quarter three last, uh, quarter four last year, uh, prices are still moving up. And generally, I think a lot of owners still expect property prices to go up uh, this year and the next. But I, I'm, I'm trying to tell you, right, I know a lot of owners don't like it when we say this, but actually prices will flatten or even come down a little bit. That is a little bit of a reality that you must face. Unless your property has some unique characteristics 
that give it uh, ability to let price go up, right? If you have an average property or even below average property, right? Do you will not expect price to go up. In fact, prices uh, will come down a little bit this year. I've, I've covered it in my earlier videos, right? I, I believe that as well because supply is coming up, right? So the only reason why your property will move up in price uh, this year is because you have a unique property which is preferred by more people. If your property is run in the mill, there are many others like you, um, don't expect it to really move up. Right? So I, I expect this index will flatten a little bit uh, for 2024. Okay, and as you can see, uh, supply is coming up. So this is by completion. Yeah? Uh, you know, in 2025, 26, 27, almost all the way for the next three, four years, right? there's a lot of supply getting keys, which is the reason why I say uh, prices will unlikely to move up a lot at least for the next couple of years uh in fact this is just for completion right we haven't talked about new launch there's a very healthy <laughs> supply of new launch this year right uh even next year 2025 so with a lot of new launch coming in uh unsold new launch also not really going down so uh yeah so supply will be there in singapore for the time being this is all part and parcel of government's plan to keep property prices under control hdb also throwing in a lot of supply right so hdb is trying to throw in some what hundred thousand units by I can't remember, but next couple of years. So a lot of supply coming in uh, in, in Singapore, right? That will keep prices uh, flat to a downward field, a downward trend, if you ask me. Um, but it's all part of government's plan to keep property prices affordable, right? Uh, then the question asked me, will it crash? I highly, highly doubt it will crash. Uh, Singapore still remains the number one city in Southeast Asia, the number one city maybe in whole Asia even. Uh, very difficult for Singapore prices to crash. Government have a lot of way. Uh, they can just remove some cooling measure like how they did in Hong Kong, right? And prices can move up or be defended uh, quite easily in Singapore. So uh, lucky to existing property owners. <laughs> if you are not yet a property owner looking to buy, uh, this is also good because it shows you that Singapore has a flaw. It will not like drop 30% kind of scenario. Uh, but I mean, uh, high prices or the prices today are, are here to stay. Like, they will not change by much. The government also cannot allow property prices to crash too much because it will destroy a lot of wealth. A lot of people get angry. So uh, they have to remain stable-ish, right? At least for the next few years. Okay, so how to spot a good deal in the market today? So like, like I was covering in the, the headline of this video, right? Um, what we're trying to do here today is to use the cross island line right to identify what is a good buy because in my opinion right and this is of course my opinion and i could be wrong i, I feel a lot of people out there are not really paying attention to this cross island line now this is the cross island line this screenshot is taken from LTA, right? And uh, there are basically three parts, I think three phases of the cross island line. The first phase, I think, uh, which I think is the east one, right? Although I think some work has started all the way to the west, right? But uh, some, the, the big one that I'm gonna cover today is actually Pasiris, uh, Pasiris MRT, right? But if you look at the line, some of the interesting things that will happen is that basically uh, it's, a, it's a kind of like a circle line equivalent, something like a circle line, not really, it's just, it's just add more connectivity, to some places like for example i stayed past series and uh, yesterday i was uh, trying to go to Opayo, and I, I found that it took quite long to go to Opayo because i had to go like in the l you know, all the way to city hall city hall and go up right there's no shortcut with cross island line i can go to ang uh in in six seven station it shortens my travel time a lot so basically more mrt create more connectivity like, which is good <laughs> right uh and if for residents of these places who stay near these mrt stations when the when this mrt is completed they will suddenly feel a boost to their lifestyle suddenly their their area become a lot more connected and because of that uh, prices will go up right uh, connectivity is very very important to make sure that property price uh, can go up right it's not really distance you know sometimes it's connectivity the, the amount of travel time okay so um and in today's case i'm gonna focus on passive risk so passive risk if you uh this if you look at the nutshell right this map right basically this is passive risk mrt right uh which is the last station on the east west line is of course a very very old uh, line there's only one shopping mall which is the white sands uh, shopping mall today which is i think operated by Fraser's, and there's a bus interchange right so uh, for those of you who know uh, there's currently a uh, project called Pasiris 8 which is the Pasiris mall over here so there'll be a new giant mall with a new condo on top called Pasiris 8 now i did a video about Pasiris 8 i think what three three years ago where i said Pasiris is Pasiris 8 is a good buy if you could buy like below thousand eight per square foot some people got at, at that price but actually Pasiris 8 today has actually moved up all the way to 2000 plus <laughs> per square foot which is not exactly cheap but i mean that is the market rate today la. so uh Pasiris 8 has probably have units uh, still selling at around the 2000 plus uh dollars uh, per square foot right and um so yeah so there'll so imagine from here there'll be one mrt station underneath which is actually this area if you see my mouse 
uh, under the circle line. It's underground. Uh, cross Cross Island Line is underground. So if you come to Pasir today, you can see quite a lot of construction work ongoing. And this section will complete in 2030, which is six years from now, which I think is a very healthy time frame. So if you buy today, you wait six years when the MRT completed Cross Island Line, you will see a jump in your price, right? Because of uh, the MRT completion. So I think now is a very good time to buy uh, Pasir Ris purely because of the Cross Island Line coming in six years, give you an upside story right you and the uh, and the mall this small pass series eight mall will complete i think end of this year uh that's the plan maybe operate by early 2025 that will add a lot of livability to pass series so you always want to buy an area where it's what we call a booster right something going to happen to transform your place right if you buy a location where something will transform then you can see price go up right if you if your location the property that you own doesn't have a transformation going on right then you have a uh, no story right or no lifestyle change that will make people want to live there. So when you have another big mall and another MRT station, more people will want to stay in Pasir Ris, right? And that will give a boost uh, to property prices. So what are the options that we can buy? So other than Pasir Ris 8, which is the most obvious one because it sits on top of the, <laughs> on the Pasir Ris MRT itself. If you, uh, if you look at the Pasir Ris 8 uh, today, I mean, average is 1,008, but actually now what they're selling is around 2,000-ish. Per square foot. Somebody bought 1,004, but this is very likely a patio unit, right? So uh, yeah, so 2,000, Per square foot. Uh, Pasir Ris 8, uh, coincidentally, this year, uh, they had to sell finish because of their, otherwise they get hit by the ABSD uh, penalty. So may it might make sense to go and ask around whether developer may throw discounts, uh, last minute discounts to clear the balance unit so they do not have to pay the penalty. Uh, so Pasir Ris 8 is interesting in the sense so you can go and check uh, Pasir Ris 8 out from that perspective, see whether they got any last minute discount to avoid ABSD. Uh, but very likely any unit that you see now are all balanced stock, which are not so favored, right? That's why they're balanced. <laughs> but this is past with eight uh, numbers as of now. So 99 years from 2021 this is the newest um, project in past series, right? Tentative uh, TOP is supposed to be, I think uh, next year, if I'm not wrong, what's the, uh, not, not next year, uh, should be next year, right? Okay, so 1825 PSF average. Okay, if you go eastwards, right, that means you look, there's downtown east, uh, which I guess most of you have been before to downtown east. So there's a, uh, another mall with a uh, Wawa Wet, the water theme park, right, which is also facing the beach, uh, uh, the Pasir Ris Beach, right. So if you talk about private condo to buy here, actually the nearest one is Eastvale. Uh, of course, there are some condos towards Loyang and down some more, right, but I think that that's too far. Uh, not really Pasir Ris already, so I'm going to ignore those. So if you look, say, walking distance to Pasir Ris MRT in the mall, right, you only have Eastville, right? Uh, but Eastville is a kind of old building, uh, 1996 uh, uh, tenure, 1999 completed, so actually it's a bit old already. Uh, how old is that? So it's like for 70 years left, I think it's too old to really be considered investment grade, right? Because uh, one thing, we when we buy 99-year property, we try to buy not too old. Lah. That means if the lease is 70 years so old, I think it's too old. Really. You can still buy 80 something, but don't buy when they are in their low 70s. Lah. I think low 70s then a bit troublesome, right? Because 1996 lah, means uh, for 28 years really. Lah. So yeah, low 70s. Um, might be good to buy for own stay, but I, I know it's, it's an old building. Uh, and once the lease drop below 70 years, like, typically most condo uh, do not really appreciate, right? If you look historically, most condos in Singapore, once they drop below 70 years, uh, they generally do not appreciate, right? So Eastvale is out of the question. If you look west, um, then there's a bunch of condos, right? Uh, Coco Palms is the most recent one. Coco Palms has one benefit, which is, is quite uh, walking distance to the MRT. It's the nearest, in fact, of all the condos here uh, towards the west. Uh, so that's why Coco Palms uh, tend to price a bit higher. It's also the newest, which is also one reason why it price a bit higher. There are, of course, a couple others. So include Dines, uh, Pallet, uh, Envy, uh, Livia. All these are all built by the same developer. Actually, CDL. Is it CDL? Yeah, CDL all built these guys uh, in the uh, past 10, 15 years. Right? So all these projects here are all 99 there are no freehold uh with various age difference right but not much right around uh 10 to 12 years so all these condos are roughly uh 80 something years uh left right so they are these one two three four five choices right are uh, all reasonably walking distance to uh Pasir Ris. at least one bus stop which is not so bad right uh if, if you want to sit bus all right yeah is it one bus stop yeah one bus stop just to get a Pasir Ris. so quite uh near so these are the five choices which I think are investment grade because they are not too old. 
they're all 80 over years old left, right? So that means you can stay for 10 years, stay for 70 over years, right? Somebody will still buy from you, right? For own stay, right? And so I consider this still investment grade uh, age, right? And if you look at the price comparison between all these condos, right, that I've shown you above, um, you can look at it, right? So passage A not completed, but they're all 99, right? And the various age of completion and various uh, uh, tenure left, right? Per square foot, you can see on the average, right? Uh, there's, a, there's a number here. So passage 8,008, right? Uh, Coco Palm a little bit nearer, so 1,005, right? The older ones are like 1,000. The rest of the NV, Dines, Livia, Pellet are hovering around 1,000, 2,003, uh, kind of range, right? So there, there are a couple of things that you'll notice, two trends. Number one is the nearer you are to MRT, the more expensive, <laughs> right? The nearer you are to MRT, the more expensive. This is, a, this is one conclusion you can make looking at this chart, right? Second conclusion you can make is uh, the newer it is, the more expensive. So newer in terms of completion date, newer also in terms of the lease, what is the balance lease? So if you look at these two conclusions, right? This is a standard conclusion you will find anywhere in Singapore, actually in most places in Singapore, nearer to MRT, more expensive, newer it is, uh, more expensive. So there's there's two things here. So let me let me take you a case study, right? What does a typical three bedroom uh look like, right, in Pasiris? Okay, so what I have here is a three bedroom, right, in D Nest, right, in uh, Pasiris. This one is going for one point three six eight million, uh, nine hundred sixty plus square feet. And if you look at the size, right, I go in, right. Um, so this is a three D video. So this is a quite good comparison for you. You come in, there's a digital door lock, right? Uh, and then you have this uh, dining area plus a living area, right? So this unit uh, has three bedrooms, right? Uh, currently only owner occupied, right? So if you go to the living area, right, you can see this one has a balcony facing outwards, right? Uh, quite clear, unblocked view, very nice. Uh, and a sizable, uh, good enough size living room, right? So this dining table provided by a uh, developer last time and you have the kitchen. Right, if you want to enclose the kitchen, you can still do it, right? There's a possibility to install some form of glass door here, right? You have a built-in oven, a fridge, right? And a good size enough kitchen. Uh, this family, I know for sure they cook, right? A washing machine here, and you can put it in the yard also if you want to. There's a big enough space for a yard uh, to put the washing machine outside. You can also hang clothes here if you want, right? Uh, up to you. So uh, newer condos, these are the kind of sizes that you see, right? Uh, this unit only going for 1.368 million asking, right? Uh, you have uh, three bedrooms. So this is a typical common bedroom, right? Quite high ceiling. This is around 2.9. Uh, the common bedroom here, actually here, if you notice, is actually a storage space given by the developer. So you can actually open up. It's actually quite deep and you can put in. It's meant to put like luggage uh, or long-term stuff that you don't really use. So luggage bag, uh, boxes, right? There's a pretty deep storage here. Uh, you can actually build uh, just nice uh, super single bed. If you want, some people actually extend it out, can put a queen if you want to. Uh, with some carpentry, you can even fit in a, uh, what do you call it? A study table as well on either side of the bed. Up to you, which one you prefer, right? Uh, wardrobe already given by developers, big enough. Aircon also by the developer, right? This one is actually a storage for the DB box switches. Right, and you have a smallish but functional enough uh, common toilet. If you want, you can always remove this door, change it into a sliding door. Right, that's what a lot of people do. Right, with a sliding door, then uh, it's, uh, you don't have this door blocking the way. Right, it's more accessible in that sense. Right, so you have another bedroom here. So this kind of uh, size is quite suitable for small families. Right, two kids still okay. Right, two one kids still fine. Uh, and you have here another unit, same similar to just now, almost mirror image. But this one doesn't have the storage. Uh, right, but there's a bay window here. Right, uh, again, quite high ceiling, wardrobe, nice view of the outside. Okay, and here you have the master. The master is pretty big for this size. If you take a look at the master bedroom. So you have a very, uh, you can put a king size bed if you want. Uh, in this case, they put a queen with only a study table here. But I would prefer to actually design a carpentry kind of thing with the built-in table or that. Right, and a nice bay window outside with again good view of the outside. And you have a sizable enough master bedroom. Master bathroom, right. Um, with a which useful bay window right, if you need one. So this is a typical uh, three-bedder 
new one uh, for just over 1.3 million, <laughs> which is like 1,003 plus uh, per square foot, which I think is already very cheap considering um, some new uh, one bidders today are all one point something million. Here, in this case, you can buy a three bidder. So I think it's very useful for people who are trying to uh, stay in a convenient location near to mall, near to MRT, uh, walking distance, and you get a three bedroom size right, for family to live. We still a quite long list of 80 over years, 80 plus, 80 plus plus, plus years left. So I hope that uh, 3D video sharing was uh, useful. Gives you an idea of what a three, typical 3 beta looks like along those uh, CDL built condos. They're all pretty much the same. I mean, if you look at uh, Coco Palms or Dines or uh, Pallet, they're all roughly this design. I actually prefer Pallet or uh, Dines or Coco Palms because they are newer, uh, newer design, newer facilities. If you go to Livia NV, uh, they are a bit older generation kind of facilities. Uh, C to believe, right? But there's a bit of difference between the two, these, these five condos. I think I split them into two categories, right? So the next palette, uh, Coco Palm have the newer design facilities, very, very modern, right? very similar to new condo launch that you see today. Whereas Livia and Envy, they are the older generation condo. They typically only have a pool, a gym, and a tennis court, right? They don't really have much else, <laughs> right? In terms of comparison, right? Yeah, so to summarize, okay, um, what kind of deal they can look up to uh, today? Look for a resale unit in areas that have an uh, upcoming booster, right? So the booster is important. And I think the booster that I'm trying to show you down here is the cross island line, which is going to complete the phase one at least in uh, six years from now. So the booster should happen anywhere between five to 10 years. So that gives you the upside potential. Okay. Number two is uh, buy as big as you can. Uh, try not to buy small because, uh, you know, Singapore today's space is a premium. Uh, families, people who are in families are willing to pay a lot more for the living space for their families. Right, if a bigger budget means they have higher income. So buy as big as you can afford. Uh, try to avoid buying uh, small. Right, uh, buy as new as you can afford. As I as I mentioned earlier, uh, condos in Singapore generally after they drop below seventy years, the price does not really appreciate uh. So the only, only people who buy at seventy years or below these right, typically they buy for own stay. They don't really think about capital appreciation, right? But if you are thinking about capital appreciation, then you should buy as new as you can. Um, uh, if can after the five ten years when you sell later, it should still be minimum seventy plus years. Or above. Okay, so balance this should be more than 70 plus years and above when you sell, huh? not when you buy, when you sell. So this is what how I would recommend if you want to buy resale, try to look for value today. This is the general uh strategy that you should have in mind. Okay, and uh, today's case example, uh Pasiris, right? And actually that listing earlier I, I talked about um uh, the DNS unit above. Actually, it's a listing that I have in Singapore today. Uh 1.36368 million. Uh, negotiable. Uh, I think it's a good buy because if you want to buy a three beta in Pasiris, I think that's the most affordable quantum three beta you can get already. Right? Anything else I've cost more 1.4x, 1.5x, right? But this uh DNS actually has the sm uh, most affordable quantum three bedrooms uh in the area. So if you're keen, let me know. I can show you around. Um I'm quite uh quite proficient in the Pasiris area. Uh know this place very well, know this place very well. So I can uh, explain you very well. And I think, yes, for me, I, I also own a property here as well. So I'm also looking forward to the cross island line uh, giving me a boost to my property value. <laughs> okay, so I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, if you like what we have to share, if you have any questions about Singapore real estate, you can also uh, drop me a comment below or DM me at my Singapore number 8126-1626. Uh, if you like our videos, do uh, like, share and subscribe. Uh, I hope today's video is a simple video to help you understand how to buy Singapore property and what are the kind of trends I'm looking out for today if you want to buy in Singapore today, right? Uh, that's my email, uh, that's my Facebook. Now, this, this can also scan this QR code to join our mailing list and get our mailing list on any news and updates about uh, property investment in Singapore or Malaysia. So <laughs> thank you very much. I hope that was useful. Uh, if you like uh, to want to buy a bus, bus series trade beta, do drop me a call and I'll give you a tour and I explain why this is a good buy to this price. Thank you very much and bye-bye.